Hello traders, this is Liza from ninjaaddons.com and in this video I'm going to dive into the waves ratio panel so you can see how it looks and have a better understanding on how it works. Let's start. First we are going to load the Elliott indicator on the chart. You can let the default settings and click OK to load the indicator on the chart. Here we are in the waves ratio panel. You can see that there are five tabs where you can change the ratios for each wave individually. It is also a good way to remember how waves are constructed and what is the signification of each ratio that you can modify. Now just before we start, remember that all my explanations as well as the pictograms in the toolbar are for the bullish count only. This is for a better understanding. However, internally it will process the calculations for the bearish count too. By definition, wave 2 comes after wave 1 as a corrective wave. The Elliott theory says that this wave is supposed to react in an area around 50% to 61.8% retracement of wave 1. In our case, it corresponds to the minimum zone retracement parameter and maximum zone retracement and the unit is expressed in a percentage. You are free to change this if you want, but if you want to stick to the theory, you can let the default values. The second rule of wave 2 is that the wave should never retrace more than 100% of wave 1. If it does, then wave 2 is invalidated and a new count will start. This is the red line you can see on the pictogram. Parameter name is wave 2 retracement max and again you can change it to any value you prefer. Last thing you can do here is to colour the bars of wave 2 on the chart. Now let's move to Wave 3 tab. By definition, Wave 3 comes after Wave 2 as an impulsive wave. This is the wave you want to get in because it has the best potential. The Elliott theory says that this wave is supposed to be 161.8 to 200% of Wave 1 starting from the bottom of Wave 2. In our case, it corresponds to the minimum zone projection parameter and maximum zone projection, and the unit is expressed in a percentage. You are free to change this if you want, depending on the instrument you trade and your own experience, but if you want to stick to the theory, you can let the default values. Now there is a second rule we've added that is not really written in the Elliott theory, at least not like that which says that to validate a wave 3 and therefore to enter a wave 4, the move has to be superior to 112.8% of wave 1. If not, the next retracement will be a subwave, 3.2 or 3.4, until the move reaches the 112.8% level. This is to stick to one of the rules that say wave 3 is never the smallest impulsive wave. This is the wave 3 projection minimum parameter. And here again, you can change the default 112.8% value to something else. Like with wave 2, you can change the colour of the bars of wave 3 on the chart. Wave 4 is very similar to Wave 2 in its construction. By definition, Wave 4 comes after Wave 3 as a corrective wave. The Elliott theory says that this wave is supposed to react in an area around 23.6 to 44.7% retracement of Wave 3. In our case, it corresponds to the minimum zone retracement parameter and maximum zone retracement, and the unit is expressed in a percentage. You are free to change this if you want, but if you want to stick to the theory, you can let the default values. The second rule of Wave 4 is that the wave should never retrace below the top of Wave 1. If it does, then Wave 4 is invalidated, and a new count will start. This is the red line you can see on the pictogram. Parameter name is Wave 4 Overlap Max. 
Now, what is important here is that we've slightly changed this rule by using an overlap parameter. And basically, you can allow a certain percent of overlap, see it as an error margin, before invalidating the wave 4. After doing some testing, we've decided to set it to 12.8%, but it really depends on the instrument's volatility and has to be set very carefully. If you want to stick to the Elliott theory, you can put 0% in this parameter, which is fine too, but will result in more invalidation of count. Here again, you can colour the bars of wave 4. Wave 5 is very similar to wave 3 in its construction, except this is supposed to be the end of the entire move, or trend. By definition, wave 5 comes after wave 4 as an impulsive wave. This is supposed to be the last impulsion of prices before a pause, followed by a significant ABC retracement. We didn't find any information about the supposed objective area of wave 5 in the Elliott theory, but with experience, we defined a 61.8 to 86.6% projection of wave 3 from wave 4 where price tend to slow down. Remember, wave 5 is where you want to take your profits and is not supposed to be a major move. It corresponds to the minimum zone projection parameter and maximum zone projection, and the unit is expressed in a percentage. Like for wave 3, we've added a second rule that is not really written in the Elliott theory, but sticks to the principle that says that wave 5 is supposed to be a small move. So in our case, we decided to validate a wave 5 and therefore enter into an ABC retracement when the move is superior to 61.8% of wave 3, starting from the bottom of wave 4. If not, the next retracement will be a sub-wave, 5.2 or 5.4, until the move reaches the 61.8% level. This is the W5 projection min parameter, and here again, you can change the default 61.8% value to something else. Again, you can change the colour of the bars of wave 5 on the chart. And last but not least, the ABC settings. The ABC move I'm talking about here is not the major ABC move in capital letters that comes at the end of the entire count. It is the ABC retracement that we can see during wave 2 and wave 4. Now this part is a bit complicated to explain, but it has important implications in the count calculation. Remember that the default values are set to standard values that are good enough to work with and you are not obliged to change them. But in case you are curious, here are the explanations. There are two levels to configure here that will have consequence on the countdown. The settings will be applied to the ABC retracement of wave 2 and wave 4 simultaneously. The first one is the wave B max extension. It is a level where the count will stay in wave 2 if the prices stay below and enter into wave 3 if the prices go above this level. By default, it is sent to minus 12.8%, which means that the top of wave B can be a little superior of the top of wave 1. If you want the top of wave B below the top of wave 1, you can put 0 or 12.8 for example. The second parameter is the Wave C Minimum Retracement. This parameter sets a limit to a valid Wave C or the start of the next wave, Wave 3 or Wave 5. Say for example, we are in Wave 2B and there is a new low. It can be a Wave 2C if price goes below the level, or it can be a Wave 3.1 if price goes above this level it would be the start of an impulsive move. Set to 100%, it basically means that the bottom of wave C should be below the bottom of wave A, which is a standard rule. Now again, 
All the default settings are set to standard value and in 99% of the time, you don't have to change them. The Waves Ratio panel is here to help you to decompose the wave structure by looking at the pictograms. Also remember that if you change a value, you have to reload the chart by clicking on the little arrow at the top of the toolbar. This is because the ratios have a direct incidence on the wave calculation and can't simply be refreshed. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, please send us a note at contact at ninjaaddons.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified when a new video is published. Thanks for watching. Until next time.